In this video, I'm going to be diving into an essential topic for all web designers because I've got 11 mistakes that you're going to want to avoid when creating websites. Whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting out on your web design journey, you're going to want to avoid these 11 mistakes as it will save you time, it will give your users a far better experience, and it will help you create some amazing websites. Hi, it's Alex here from Brainstorm Force. I've been making websites for over 15 years. And when I first started out, I made a few of the mistakes that are in this video too. So let's jump into the 11 mistakes. I've also got some example websites that I'm gonna share with you that are making some of these mistakes. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around for number 11 as it's a real conversion killer. The first mistake is neglecting mobile responsiveness. According to data from Statista, around 60% of internet traffic comes from mobiles, and that's excluding tablets. This of course means that you need to design your websites with a mobile first approach. And neglecting responsiveness altogether, well, you're gonna alienate at least 60% of your traffic, giving people a bad experience and making them not want to use your website. So let me show you an example of a site that is completely unresponsive it's this site here, which is uh, Gates and Fences. And as you can see, it looks like it was probably made in the late 1990s. And if we take a look at it on a mobile phone, you can see that it looks exactly the same as it does on a desktop, making it extremely hard to use because everything is really small. The navigation is difficult to navigate and just generally it looks a mess. By using WordPress and a good theme like Astra and a page builder like Spectra, you can easily design pages that are fully responsive as you'll have all the options that you need to make sure they look absolutely perfect on a mobile phone. And let's not forget about tablets either. Again, if you're using Astra and Spectra, you can easily see what your pages are gonna look like on a tablet and design them so they look absolutely sweet on the smaller screen sizes. By the way, you'll find links to everything that I mentioned in this video in the description below. So be sure to go check it out. The next big mistake you want to avoid is overloading your pages with too many visual elements. When you're designing your pages, it's easy to get carried away and add lots of videos and images and animations, but too many can overwhelm your visitors and slow down your website. You want to aim for a clean, crisp and clear design with everything laid out nicely, lots of white space so that your users can easily see how to navigate and find what they want. One example of a website that's got far too many visual elements is walmart.com. If we take a look at the homepage, you can see that it's jam packed full of images, of offers, of products, of so many things. It makes the entire experience quite overwhelming. The third big mistake that you're gonna to wanna to avoid is poor navigation. Make sure you create websites with a very clear and logical structure, and then portray that structure in a very intuitive navigation system. An example of a website with a poor navigation system is zara.com. To start with, it's quite difficult to see the navigation over the background images. And then when you do start to click on it, it doesn't make much sense. For example, you've got linen, but then shirts. What if you need a linen shirt? Then you scroll down a little bit further, you've got hoodies and sweatshirts, but then below that you've got sweaters. It's just all a bit confusing. Try and make your navigation system as easy as possible to use. Make it very clear where people need to click and how they can find the products and services and pages that they're actually looking for. The fourth big mistake you want to avoid is ignoring accessibility. Accessibility means creating a website that can be accessed by everyone, including those with disabilities. Make sure that you use nice color contrasts so people with visual impairments can easily see what's going on on the pages. Make sure that you add alt text to your images so those using a screen reader will know what your images are even if they can't see them. You'll also wanna ensure that your website can be navigated with a keyboard. And by doing all these things, not only will you make sure that everyone can easily use your website, but it's also good for SEO. Global superstar Beyonce had a website created that wasn't accessible and it resulted in a court case and her being sued because some of her fans weren't able to enjoy her website. There's been other legal cases like this too. So by ignoring accessibility, not only are you alienating some of your users, but you could end up in some legal hot water. 
The fifth mistake I have for you is inconsistent design. Inconsistent design can make your website look unprofessional. Try and keep fonts and colors and layouts consistent across all of the pages on your website. By doing this, you'll avoid confusing your users and make your website look really nice and polished. An example of a big website that does have a bit of an inconsistent design is Yahoo. If we take a look at their homepage, which is news, it looks like this. Then if we move on to finance, the width changes for a start. The navigation is also a little bit different. Then if we take a look at sports, the width changes again, the header's a little bit different again, just generally it lacks consistency. So the key is to keep everything consistent, keep everything the same width, keep the navigation the same, keep the colors the same, and keep the fonts the same, and you have a great looking website. Let's move on to mistake number six. Now this one can have a really big effect on your conversion rate. And the mistake is to have a lack of clear calls to action. Think about what you want your visitors to do when they visit your website, and then make sure that they can clearly see how to carry out that action. Make your calls to action very visible. Make them stand out. Make it very clear what you want the visitor to do and how they can do it, whether it be joining your newsletter, buying a product, or contacting you. Here's an example website that lacks any clear calls to action. It's the website of Vortex Technology, and yeah, I know it looks old. It probably is very old. However, as you can see, there is no clear call to action. What do they really want us to do? They do make it very clear what they don't do, which is nothing to do with phones, tablets, or any other products or services. And then there is a phone number, but it doesn't actually ask you to call them. And then there's an email address down the bottom. Again, you're not quite sure what that's for or who that would go to or, or why on earth you'd want to send them an email. If you want to create a website with some really good calls to action, then do check out Astra Theme and Spectra as you'll find some blocks in there that you can use for calls to action that look really, really sweet. Mistake number seven is adding too many ads. Yeah, I get it, I understand. You wanna make as much money as you possibly can from your website using ads. So it might make sense to just add as many ads as you possibly can. But this is a big mistake. By having too many ads, you can slow down your website, you make the layout look really cluttered, it can cause accessibility issues, it can have a negative effect on SEO, it can detract from your content. There's a lot of reasons why you wanna avoid having too many ads on your website. An example of a big website that has far too many ads, in my opinion, is the Daily Mail, which is a UK newspaper website. If you take a look at one of the articles on the Daily Mail website, you'll see that it's packed with ads. There's ads across the top of the page, there's ads down the sides, there's a floating video ad, there's ads all across the bottom of the article, and it's quite distracting because as you're reading the article, these ads are changing, they're animated, there's videos playing, it's just not a great user experience. Of course, you're gonna to want to add ads to some websites to generate some revenue, but just be very careful with how you place those ads. Make sure that they don't compromise user experience. It's not worth losing visitors just for a few extra dollars in ad revenue. Let's move on to mistake number eight, which is overlooking your content layout. If you fail to lay out your content in a nice and clear way, it can make it hard to read and it can have a negative impact on your user's experience. By organizing your content well, by using things like headings, subheadings, bullets, and making good use of space, you can increase the readability of your content and keep your users engaged. Here's a website that's not making good use of content layout. It's the Yale School of Art website. As you can see, at first glance, there is a lot going on. And then when you click through to one of the pages or one of the articles and take a look at the text, well, wow, that's a big block of text. There's no paragraphs, there's no headings, no bullet points, no space. It's literally just a big wall of text, which makes it very difficult to read. Let's take a look at another page. Here's the about page. This one's slightly better. They've got a few paragraphs, but other than that, there's still some big blocks of text, there's no real subheadings, there's no bullet points, no bold text, no italics. It's just, just text, and it makes it quite difficult to engage with. So when you're adding content to your website, try and use all of the text features you've got available to you. Make good use of space, use subheadings, 
Use everything to make sure that your content pops and is engaging and is easy to read. The next big mistake that web designers often make is not testing the site on multiple browsers. People access the internet using all kinds of different browsers. The main ones being Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your website works correctly on all of them. Take some time to browse your website using each of these different browsers and double check that everything is rendering correctly. By not doing this, you're gonna be alienating some of your traffic. If some of your users can't access your website correctly, if it doesn't look right, or if it's not working with their browser, they're not gonna hang around. They're gonna bounce straight off and visit someone else's website. One way you can streamline your cross-browser testing is by using a platform like BrowserStack. With BrowserStack, you enter your URL and it will test your website using multiple browsers and then present the results to you. BrowserStack has a really nice interface and you can see what your website looks like on hundreds of different browsers, including those on mobile phones and tablets. They've also got some old browsers as well. So for example, you could see what your website would look like if someone was accessing it on a Windows XP machine. Mistake number 10 is overusing pop-ups. Pop-ups can be a great way to encourage your users to take action. Maybe you want them to join your mailing list, but overusing them can have a seriously negative effect on user experience. You're probably only gonna wanna use one or maybe two pop-ups. And if the user closes those pop-ups, make sure they don't reappear on every page load as it's just gonna annoy your visitors. An example of a website that's got too many pop-ups is the Herald Scotland, which is an online newspaper for Scotland. As soon as you land on the site, you're greeted with the first pop-up, which is the cookie consent pop-up. Now, of course, this doesn't have to be a pop-up. It could just be a banner across the bottom of the screen, which is a little less intrusive. Once you accept that and start browsing around, you're presented with another large pop-up that's asking you to sign up for their newsletter. Once you close that and continue to browse around, you then get another pop-up in which you're invited to take part in a survey. Free pop-ups is just too many. It's intrusive and it really does interrupt your browsing experience. If you want to add pop-ups to your website, be sure to check out the Spectra page builder that's got a built-in pop-up builder that enables you to create some really nice looking pop-ups. The final mistake I've got for you in this video and this one can have a really big effect on your conversion rate, is overcomplicated forms. Forms are an important part of every website. You're gonna to want to use forms to say, for example, generate sales leads. Before you start adding forms to your website, have a good think about the information that you want to collect from your users. It can be tempting to add loads and loads of fields because you wanna extract as much information as you possibly can from your visitors but this can be a bad idea. In general, the more fields you have, the lower the conversion rate is going to be. People just don't have the time or the inclination to complete long forms. Let me show you an example of a overcomplicated form. Here's a form that I've just built. It's a lead collection form. And well, we're just simply asking for too much information. We've got name, we've got phone number, we've got email address, we've got postal address, we've got a drop down asking for information regarding the inquiry. There's a free text box where the user can enter information. We've got the terms and conditions checkbox. There's just too much going on. By reducing the number of fields in this form, we can increase the conversion rate. In general, you're probably only gonna to need to collect the name and the email address and maybe the phone number of the user. And then with that, you can follow up and collect the additional information that you need. You could do this in a couple of different ways. You could have an automated email that goes out asking for the additional information after someone completes a form, or you could get a member of your sales team to give the person a call and have a conversation with them and talk about their needs and requirements from there. So next time you're building a form, just have a think about the fields you're adding and try and reduce it down to the bare minimum. And there we have it. They are the 11 mistakes you want to avoid as a web designer. By steering clear of those 11 mistakes, you'll be able to create some good looking, engaging, user-friendly websites that have a great conversion rate. Why not build your next website with Astra and Spectra? We've got a playlist on the channel that takes you through everything you need to know. You'll find a link to it in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you know of any other mistakes that should be avoided when creating websites, 
let me know in the comments. I do read all the comments that we get and I love to hear from you. Before you go, please click on the like button and make sure you're subscribed to avoid missing out on future Brainstorm Force videos. Until next time, good luck with your websites. See you later.